Hi! So today, we're gonna talk about my skincare secrets. And these are great because they're not product-centric, so no matter what product I use, I always sort of like think about these principles and how to treat my skin. I think a lot of times, even myself, we look at skincare products and we go, okay, what are the ingredients? And like, what is this? And what's that supposed to do? Skincare works on a very like consumerism kind of based uh, facials and treatments and all of that. And I love them too, and that's why I'm reviewing them. But there are some general principles that I like to stick by, that I swear by, that I make note of to take care of my skin in certain ways that I feel like would be very helpful to y'all. And it's great lah, cause it's free lah. So today I've compiled a list of like my skincare secrets. So you can possibly also cultivate these habits so that you can get like better skin without seriously dropping a dime or switching up your entire skincare routine. But right before we jump in, I just want to very quickly thank my sponsor. Ooh, we got a sponsor everybody! Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, film, tech and so much more. I personally use it for a lot of like bullet journaling, a lot of productivity stuff. Funny enough, a lot about social media marketing and also just like random stuff. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all 25,000 classes and workshops and communities and stuff like that for you to read really engage in. I'm just so excited to be sponsored by Skillshare because I use them a lot. I love watching classes on the MRT and just sort of like learning as I go. The classes are broken down into very palatable like bite-sized classes for you to learn stuff and it's just great. So if you want to join me as well as like seven other million creators on Skillshare, all you have to do is click the link down below. The first 500 subscribers that click on that link will get a two-month free trial for a premium membership and if you're not the first 500, don't worry because honestly I feel like the membership is very affordable. Annually, in terms of SGD, it's only $11.50. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity or career, Skillshare is the perfect place for you to keep on thriving and learning and surviving in 2019. Alright, cool. So as you can tell with my skin, let me just give you an introduction. Hello, I'm Brenda. My skin is dry. Oh my god, I didn't know that. I always thought it was oily. In Singapore especially, when it's like perpetually summer and it's very hot and humid, we tend to think that our skin is really oily and sweaty and it's gross and we want to be matte. Do we skin in humid weather? Nah, it just doesn't work. So my first and my most important skincare tip is something that I'm still trying to work on, which is to get to know your skin. Really try and get to know what your skin type is, what sort of problem areas you tend to have, what kind of habits your skin has. Your skin is the largest organ in your body, and it usually tends to reflect like what is happening on the inside. So for me, like I said, I really thought that I had just oily combination skin for the longest time. And then with consultations and with like, you know, people doing my facial and stuff, they're like, eh, you got very dry skin, ah. And I have dry skin like all over my body, but I just always thought that my skin was oily. You know, this part is like really oily. Um, I always thought that it was just very sensitive because I do tend to get rid very often. But I realized like with a closer analysis, like my moisture levels, you know, in my skin is actually quite low and there are also like minuscule like lines of dryness that kind of show me that it's not actually oily skin but dehydrated skin. So how it works basically in layman terms is that your skin is kind of made up of a percentage of oil and water. So when water is low, your skin kind of produces more oil to kind of make up for it. And a lot of like people and beauty gurus kind of say that but you don't realize how true it can be for your skin. I just assume I have oily skin because I drink a lot of water and this all seemed to make sense because the moment I wasn't in humid weather when I was in New York, like when I put on really hydrating products, when I put on not a lot of powder, my skin got drastically better. If you see my The Ordinary review, my skin was like and that was because I didn't powder at all, I didn't put on any concealer, it was just moisturizer on my face. So that worked for me in terms of having dry skin. And that's also why my skin really really loves like vitamin C, ceramide, and like Sika gel because my skin also tends to get rid very often. So get to know your skin, you know you could have like a lot of hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation is different from acne scarring. My problem is acne scarring, like acne goes away but then you know like there are like dark spots or something, I don't know if you can see Probably you can. This is 4K light, oh my god. But hyperpigmentation is different and I don't have a lot of it, even though I thought I did because I put on quite a lot of sunblock, which is something that I thought was kind of like synonymous and I just assumed that I had pigmentation, but 
actually do it. Yeah, try to figure out what your skin has. Maybe you have large pores, maybe you have like very congested skin, maybe you also have dehydrated skin, maybe you just really do produce a lot of oil. If you don't know how to figure these out, like maybe go to a facial and ask someone like, oh, do you know what my skin type is kind of thing? Or you can just really pay attention to how your skin works, what stuff your skin gravitates towards, what makes it feel really good, what makes it not feel so good. Next tip is also to pay attention to the temperature of your skin. If you're constantly around like let's say a kitchen environment or somewhere that's really really hot, just make sure to always cool your skin down. Literally take an ice cube, make sure it's clean water obviously, kind of wash the surface off a little bit and then sort of like go over your skin. It tightens your pores, it really like lifts your face up and it also closes the pores. When your pores are closed, it doesn't attract as much like sebum and dirt to kind of like dig in and you don't get like as deep seated pimples. And something about splashing your face with cold water just makes that much more of a difference. I don't know how, I don't know why. It's always something that whenever I remember to do, like really splash my face a lot of times with very cold water. My skincare just like sits in so well. The next day my skin is super refreshed and in general your face just feels less heaty. Your skin likes to produce a lot of oil and a lot of sebum when it's like at a certain heat because I guess it wants to cool off. Stress can also make your head like feel really flushed and really hot and that kind of thing. So I think that's where I get like my stress breakouts from. So it's very important to make sure that your skin is not at too high of a temperature. This is not to say that you should literally put your face underneath the aircon or like in a freezer and like just chill there. Or that steaming is bad. Steaming is good as long as you finish it off with a cold shower or like cold splashes on your face to close off the pores. If you don't do any of that but you sort of want to like keep you know your temperature at bay, I really highly recommend you put your sheet masks in the fridge. It's not as inconvenient as you think it is and it's also quite short when you put it on. There's always this like Ooh! and I just vocal it. I'm just like, cold, and then I just, after a while, you know, your face warms it up, so it's alright. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it does the trick. Okay, this is a good one. Get straight into skincare the moment you get out of the shower. I wouldn't recommend you putting your products in the bathroom because like I said, when you take hot showers, and by the way, hot showers are not good for your skin. Just imagine like cooking a chicken in hot water and doing the same on your face. That's that's not great. Don't like, okay, just gonna put down my towel, gonna touch this, touch that, like get on my laptop, use my phone for a bit. The germs on your hands are gonna go into your face. Because I've had such temperamental breakouts in the past, I've become so like almost germaphobic with my hands and I don't like to use too much soap because like I said I have very dry skin and like my hands hurt like they hurt now I'm like trying to fight every bone in my body to go get some look you know what? I'm gonna go get it hold on great. Just remember that our skin is like a giant sponge. All of the pores are the pores on the sponge. You can't possibly squeeze every single thing out and you can't touch it without contaminating it. And when your skin is wet, your pores are already open after your shower, you want to fill it in with good stuff as quickly as possible. With toners with serum, you actually want to apply it on top of already damp or wet skin. And I don't even go in with a towel because you know, towels after like a week or so, they can be a little bit nasty. Like you're wiping your bum, you're wiping your leg and then you you also wipe your face like that's a bit you know it takes a bit of getting used to like having a sopping face for me I just like rest my chin underneath my towel and so it gets rid of all the dripping and then I just kind of like you know let it sit for a while and then I go in and I get my skincare and I do it in quick succession so it never ever gets dry and I finish all of my steps before my skin like really sets in and it's like thank you for today goodbye since we're talking about skincare routine my next tip is to not overwhelm your skin with a ton of products as Especially when you're trying out a new routine, you can slowly incorporate one by one. For me, it's a wholly different ballgame because I want to see the effects of certain products on my skin and so I tend to like switch up my routine pretty fast and I tend to switch products in day in and day out. But with your personal skincare routine, like switch it out often enough, like I would say like a few weeks maybe, like or to have a couple of different items. If you have a lot of products, you can switch them between days or like night and day sort of thing to see how your skin reacts, what your skin needs. But I would say say don't overwhelm your skin with a ton of products don't put on four serums and three moisturizers and, and five toners and um, I know the Korean skincare method is like a 10 to 12 step thing which would work but you need to make sure that all of these products work synonymously together if they're in the same line if they have the same ingredients if they're all for a calming sort of purpose that's good you just don't want to be in a situation where active ingredients sort of clash with each other and then you get like super like rashy and itchy 
skin. If your skin is really hurting, don't just sit there and be like, pain is beauty, I'm gonna sit through and it's working on my skin. Don't do that because it's probably having a reaction to all the stuff that you have. For example, if you have active acids like BHA or AHA, I kind of talked about it in my Cosrx review a long time ago, wow. It's best not to mix it with any other things like retinol, vitamin A for example, even vitamin C, I wouldn't recommend it. Some people say it's okay to have like niacinamide which is vitamin B6 can mix with vitamin C or maybe it cannot. Some people say can, some people say cannot. I don't take the risk. If I'm using one active ingredient, I go with that. If you're looking at like maybe green tea or something else, you never know what other stuff it's like. I will use things from the same line, it works for me because I review them or I use stuff that I know don't clash or don't have any active ingredients. A good way to make sure that they don't have active ingredients is if it's formulated with like super natural ingredients like if it's honey for example that's healing they don't add any other like active like like treatment sort of ingredients if it's Sika, Centella, Snail, Mucin that sort of thing it's probably okay to put it together maybe just work with four or five products and sort of see what your skin likes and another reason you want to do that is because if you do get an allergic reaction or if something doesn't work for you or if something works miraculously for you you want to know what the product is and when you overwhelm everything on top you just might not know if it's a combination if it's a duo or something you just won't know what it is and you won't be able to replicate that kind of like effect you know respect your skin know that like it can only take so much per session of like skincare placement and just see sort of like how it reacts to like certain things before you start including and incorporating more products. Since we're talking about overwhelming your skin and like doing too much for it, never, never, never over exfoliate or over cleanse your skin. Literally the worst because your skin freaks out because it's not at its normal levels. To function properly, your skin has to maintain its pH levels, its oil and moisture levels and everything else. If anything sort of goes out of whack, that's when your skin freaks out, overproduces to compensate and then your pores get clogged and this and that and you break out and it's just horrible. If you have sensitive skin, if you have sensitive skin or like thinner skin like I do, I never use a physical exfoliator. Even with very gentle ones, I am very very cautious and also because I am very heavy handed. So I'm like a, I'm like a washer. So I wouldn't put it on my cheeks, I'll probably put a little bit on my T-zone just to sort of clear it. With physical exfoliators like acids for example, I only use it once a week max. And also with over cleansing, don't do it. Don't like scrub off all of the oils off of your face because sometimes the oils are good. It's meant to protect your skin barrier and you don't want to compromise it and you don't want to rid your skin of all of its natural oils and its natural sebum that would be horrible if you already had dry skin but even if you have oily skin your skin is going to compensate and freak out and be like where is the oil where is the oil and then produce even more oil so that's just not a good idea don't do it because i have makeup on and because i have sensitive skin i don't like to go over with a cotton pad unless i absolutely need to for like eye makeup so usually i use a gel or oil kind of like makeup remover cleanser thing and then i go in with my normal cleanser which is a gel cleanser so that's my double cleanse method and that's enough. My next tip is not as important but it's sort of like a subplot. If you're gonna use a mask and you're gonna use a mask to go to sleep, do not put on a sheet mask to go to sleep. Use a sleeping mask that's meant for that purpose. With a sheet mask, it has moisture in that sheet, right? And then you put it on your face and then it goes into your skin. That's how osmosis and diffusion works, right? Your water molecules, your ingredients, like just basically everything that is in that mask will travel from a higher concentration to a lower concentration which is your face. What happens after 20 minutes of wear is not that it's gonna like really completely go into your skin. Once your skin is hydrated after 15 to 20 minutes, right? Like I said, it goes from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So it's gonna travel out of your skin back into the mask or it's gonna go into the air. So don't do that. That's not great. Sleeping masks are like a moisturizer but even lighter. It's meant for like the overall protective layer of your skin. It's meant for sleeping in. It's formulated in such a way that it's a lock-in formula it won't like you know evaporate into the air it won't sit weird on your skin it won't dry your skin out so if you want to do that i highly recommend the laneige one i know we're not supposed to talk about products but if you want to use a sleeping mask like i really really love the laneige one I'm jaw dropping in uh, recommendation. My next tip is one of my favorites. I stick to it religiously now, is to always wear sunblock. Even if I'm not wearing makeup, it's part of my skincare routine now. I used to not like it and I used to not wear it because I thought they were commodogenic. I thought they would clog my skin, my pores up, and then make me break out. And like, it's not great for what I thought was oily skin. But in actual fact, you get a lot of chemical sunscreens and even like very well formulated physical sunscreens that are non-commodogenic, that don't have that like blasted white layer 
on your skin and it makes you look very natural and so I always do my entire skincare routine and I always finish off with sunscreen. The only times I wouldn't wear it is either at night when I'm just about to sleep or when I'm going out to a place that it's like dark and I'm gonna get photographed a lot because SPF is basically a reflector and so if you're going clubbing and then you put on sunscreen, when you take photos with flesh, you're just gonna look your neck is gonna be a different shade from your skin and it's just not fantastic. But if you're sort of planning to do work for a while, it's like almost evening time, you're like, ah, do I really need sunscreen? If you're gonna be facing a lot of UV light, if you're not gonna be like photographed a lot but you're still gonna be out, you know, just wear a little bit of sunscreen. The lowest SPF I have is 30 but I very rarely wear that. I usually just wear 50 and I don't touch it up throughout the day. It's, it's, eh. You could and that would be really fantastic but that's not something that I can preach because I just don't do it and also why would I put sunscreen on top of everything I've put on my face, you know? SPF is non-negotiable even if you're gonna be like sort of in school, lecture halls, in class, that sort of thing. If you're not gonna be directly under sun, the light from your phones and your computers, that UV light does actually cause hyperpigmentation and that's not like cute little freckles, it's actual like little 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 spots of uneven skin tone all throughout your face. And that's one of many forms of sun damage, you know, skin cancer is a thing too. So, so just wear sunscreen you know, put it on your neck as well. My next tip should be no surprise. Don't get into the habit of touching your face. Don't sort of rest your hands on your cheek. Keep brushing your hair away. If you know that you need your hair away from your face, like do this. I do this all the time. I just sort of clip half of my hair up and I just call it a day. I have these little antennas that I just sort of leave because they don't touch my face. This pimple here, I don't know if you can see, is actually from me like having an itchy nose yesterday and I was like sort of touching it. I was at a thrift store and I was like, oh, if I touch it, I'm gonna get a pimple. But it was so itchy and so I scratched it. Your nail bits hide so much dirt and like germs and all that kind of gross stuff that even when you like remove it, it's still sort of there. And your hands are never like 100% clean, right? Just because you have to interact with life. And that's alright. Just don't get into the habit of like touching your skin. If you do your hair and whatever and then you touch your skin again, like the oils are gonna transfer, your laptop, your phone, germs are gonna transfer. Not just that, but whenever you tug or pull on your skin or you're too harsh with your skin, it compromises your skin barrier, compromises your elasticity, you know, promotes like premature aging. It's just not great. This next one is something that you hear all the time but I just have to say it. Sort of eat clean and drink enough water. You don't have to chug water. You don't have to like blah 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 blah. To the point that you feel like vomiting, that you feel like you have an ocean inside you. You don't have to only eat vegan, you know, that kind of thing. But I will tell you now that ever since I found out I was lactose intolerant, I don't actually eat cheese very often. I don't drink fresh milk. Like I'm not like a dairy person straight up. And I only eat pastries or baked goods, stuff that incorporates butter or other forms of dairy sort of occasionally and this is a big difference from how I was like at home like with my mom who would always buy fresh milk and everything I feel like my skin has honestly cleared up my digestive system just feels like it's working better and it's just it's never like a big thing and I actually had my lactose intolerance pointed out to me by a friend who noticed that like I had to run to the toilet every time I had like tres leches cake which is like still my favorite cake it's made out of four different types of milk oh I love it so much but she realized that like my body cannot take it and I realized that I always break out like a day or two after I've consumed a lot of dairy so cutting it out has not only been better for my health and like you know listening to what my body needs and stuff but my skin hasn't been breaking out as often like when I was younger I definitely did break out more and it was always this area like this congested sort of hormonal area and I don't know if y'all know this someone told me this but 97% of Asians are actually lactose intolerant humans aren't meant to consume cow's milk in the first place so it makes sense that such a high percentage of Asians especially who aren't used to like, you know, drinking house milk is actually lactose intolerant. So yeah, if you are super gassy, if you like need to go to the toilet like within a day of like consuming a lot of dairy, then you probably know that there's some form of intolerance. And I'm not telling you to cut it out, but maybe pay attention to whether it affects your skin as well and then make the decision lah. Like if you want good skin, if you want a good digestive tract, like you can switch to soy milk, which is like a cheap sort of like pretty tasty alternative in my opinion, or almond milk, or oat milk, etc. Besides the diet, I feel like stress and mental health also matters a lot. Before exams, you know, when I have a weirder sleep pattern, if I'm physically stressed or upset about something, I don't know if it's the temperature of the face, like, because I get really hot in my face and red in my face when I, like, get very emotional. I always break out and it's always the forehead pimples. I would say, you know, try to have a more regular sleep pattern. I know sometimes that's not possible, but just try. And if you're super, super stressed, maybe go running and then, you know, wash your face when you come 
bag, don't just let it sit. Or meditate, like just find ways to de-stress because your body knows when it's under a lot of stress, it gets very congested everywhere, including your face. All right, next up, let's talk about makeup. Do you wash your brushes? Do you clean your brushes? I don't clean them super regularly. I would say I clean them maybe like actually once every three months. I'm not the best. But if your skin is super sensitive or if you live in a very dusty, dirty environment, if you're bringing your brushes out and about, like if you're, you know, whatever, don't share your brushes. First of all, don't share your makeup. You can't see germs and you know, you'll... Yeah, it'll contaminate. I guess that's a good thing about me being like more conscious. I wouldn't say I'm a germaphobe. Like I have no problem like like swimming in the soil if I need to. But with makeup, especially because we tend to usually keep it for more than a year, two years. You just want to make sure it's as clean and as hygienic as possible for it to be able to stay that long. If you have expired makeup and it smells okay, it performs okay, you don't get a reaction from it. If it's a powder especially, you can probably keep it. But the moment you see some sort of growth, you see a film over it, it smells sort of weird, just throw it out. Like, no eyeshadow colour in the world is worth losing an eye over, do you know what I mean? So just be careful, be hygienic, you never know, you might get eye pimples or like that sort of thing if the fallout gets onto your skin. Don't share concealers, especially when it's sort of like a doflet applicator, when you have direct contact with your skin. Like, I don't even put my own doflet onto my skin, I put it onto my hand and then I tap because it's just way more hygienic and I don't get the germs on like a pimple because you know, you're concealing a pimple, of course you're gonna touch on the pimple to go back into the tube and contaminate the whole thing. If your foundation is old, the formula may have changed, it may be commodogenic for your skin. If it's exposed to a lot of sunlight, it might also change, you know, you just never know with these things. So be clean with your brushes, be clean with your makeup, throw up stuff that's disgusting. So just paying attention to small things and other stuff like small small stuff that I don't really pay attention to to be honest like putting your phone all the way to your face I put it sort of to my ears and I also use wireless earphones so I can just talk and also sleeping on one side of your face I just switch out my pillowcases or like I flip it so it's not a problem for me I feel like a bigger thing is just really being hygienic with your makeup and your skincare. Oh my god why did I not talk about this? Okay if you have tubs of moisturizers I'm very lazy I don't use the spatula also because the spatula can hold a lot of germs but what I do is I make sure my hands are absolutely clean I get a good amount of stuff and I never double dip never and with other serums you get the drop you got the squish so just use that and then try not to touch the nozzle just don't get germs on it. The next one is huge. Remove your makeup and remove it properly. Remove it before you go to sleep. If you're clubbing, you'll come home, you're really freaking tired, you're super drunk, you just pass out and stuff, and then you have a full face of makeup on. Can you imagine? Oh, it's like hours and hours of sweat and chemicals and pigments. Basically just like paint on your face and you sit in that, you baste in it, your skin is a sponge. It's gonna sink into your face whether you like it or not. It's not just gonna sit on your face and be like, I'll just wait like patiently until Brenda's like ready to remove me and then I'll just go and I won't leave a trace. That's not what happens. It's gonna sink in, it's gonna dry up. It's not gonna be fantastic for your skin. It's gonna be difficult to cleanse as well once it sits into the pores. When you double cleanse, just make sure you cleanse it properly. If you're going in with toner, with your cotton pad and you still see foundation and sort of like grayish, grimish things, maybe go in with micellar water or maybe go in with another toner or if it's really bad like literally use a very gentle cleanser and cleanse your face again it's essentially just sort of like dirt on your face so yeah remove it don't be lazy all right the next tip is how you organize a skincare routine i know that everyone sort of knows like cleanser toner serum moisturizer sleeping mask that sort of thing if you don't really know how to incorporate like emulsions for example skin for example um treatment stuff for example eye creams and then oils and all of that, just remember that you want to go from thinnest to thickest and eye creams, spot treatments should go on before so that your skin gets like a direct treatment before you get into all the stuff. I would say with like active ingredients, especially if they're serums, it's good to use a toner or a skin or an essence even then before you get into an active serum and then sort of pat it up so that it sort of sits in and it gets to like slowly be diffused into your skin. Go from water 
water to honey you know that kind of thing lightest all the way into thickest and the thickest will seal your skin lock in all of the moisture and then provide a very good barrier for your skin if you put the thickest creams and oils on top of your face first all the other stuff that you put after is not gonna go in because of the size of the molecules so yeah alright my final final tip for you if you've watched this entire video and you're like I do all of these things but I still get a breakout I don't understand what's happening you're a lie you're a scam you're a cheat go to the dome I went to a dome once like in my second year of uni when I like did everything I possibly could and it just like wasn't working he gave me a couple of creams and I put it on my face the biggest breakouts like slowly went away and when the big breakouts go away especially when you're not super concerned and you're always touching your face to sort of see where are the new bumps it just very quickly tapers out by itself and I've not been back since and I don't have to because I just take good care of my skin now that it's cleared up and it was expensive but man was it worth it. I think especially for me because I have to edit my own videos and so many of y'all have to look at my face. I just felt like, oh my god, I just needed to get this done. And some of y'all can relate, like the worse your skin gets, the more stressed you are and then the worse it gets and it's just a vicious cycle. And I know this is a huge economic privilege, not everyone can afford to see a dermatologist, so I would just tell you now, you don't absolutely have to, there are ways to treat acne all on your own, but if none of these tips work, if none of the products work, instead of going and investing hundreds of dollars in men, any different types of skincare. Maybe just go and see if there's a source to your problem, if you can fix it with a professional that's able to really see what's going on. Because at the end of the day, you might have a hormonal issue or you may have like stubborn acne that needs a specific type of treatment. It's not cheap, but you don't have to go all the time. And if you really are at your wit's end, then I would recommend it. So those are all my skincare tips. I hope you found them interesting. I hope that you found that they are helpful. I think these are sort of things that we all know in the back of our heads and it's not a surprise for me to say them, but verbalizing it and you sort of like processing and be like ha huh, okay like this is really important it also serves as a reminder to you and to me as well that you know we need to take care of our skin understand our skin not overwhelm it and just be nice and be hygienic with it so if you like this video if you want to see more let me know in the comments below if you liked it don't forget to click the thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel i make new videos every week once or twice i'm trying to make it like a wednesday and sunday thing so yeah don't forget to also turn on your notifications to receive my videos hot off the press and I will see y'all in my next one.